Puss in Boots 3, not the highlight of the series. Surprise, surprise. The intro is much lazier this time around, with the animation as a whole taking a real downsize. It's very limited and doesn't have the flair or style of previous films. Puss begins as a chef and waiter. I assumed maybe he became much less adventurous and this would be a slice of life, but no, it's actually Around the World in 80 Days featuring Pero. In the film's defense, I will say this time the villain is much more interesting than the second film. He's got more character, he's got a better design, he's more memorable, but he doesn't spend much of the time actually affecting the plot or narrative. His best scenes being the first and last. Also, he's not particularly an intimidating threat, so it's hard to take him seriously. The first 10 minutes are likely to be the best. It's the most fun, the dynamic is the strongest. Unfortunately, that abruptly ends as soon as the premise begins. And the premise sounds like a good idea. Puss is the perfect character for this type of film, but the execution is really lacking. We're jumping between countries while being chased by the other musketeers. The problem is, these are average chase scenes collaged in between different backgrounds. If you don't really get any time to feel the character of these locations, nor does directing really highlight anything in particular. That wouldn't be so bad if the characters were any good, but they're mostly stock. Perra at this point is less himself and more a cipher for Phineas Ferg. It's a bit of a chore to watch overall, with more average musical numbers, just what Toei films needed, right? Especially the puss ones, it's their true crux. I shouldn't have to say that a giant robot mammoth is so underwhelming. Like, the concept itself should be enough to elevate this scene, but it's just boring. The last scene in particular could have really used the classic Toei team. A fight to the top of the clock tower through mechanisms, jumping, climbing, fighting. This is a Miyazaki cut waiting to happen. But the finest team members had already left, and what we get is something which is a bit more middle of the road, but with a great premise which you could say for the whole film, really. This is the last film we'd see Pero in, and I would have preferred something a bit more graceful as a send-off, but his legacy lives on in the Toei logo, even to this day. But perhaps it's time to bring him back for one final time on the road, though I don't think that's going to happen. I can see this as one of the last nails in the coffin of classic Toei. Now join me tomorrow as we try and tackle World Masterpiece Fairy Tales, which Toei did to compete with Nippon Animation's own series, and I have a feeling the results will vary very much in quality.